So welcome back to the ninth episode of 12 classes. Uh, we're two thirds of the way there. I don't know how I'm still doing this. Uh, you might be able to see that, like I've worn this shirt about four or five days ago. And that's because I'm filming this series in a really random order. Like I'm not going through like the first, second, third episode and so on. I'm filming the first episode and then going to the fifth and then going to the seventh. and. You know what? It doesn't really matter. Today I'm going to be talking about a class I took on machine learning. So let's get right into it. So the first question is, what exactly is machine learning? Well, before that, before I tell you about it, uh, let's think a bit more about like what computers do and what can computers do. Different tasks that computers can do uh, is mostly just things that we tell the computer to do. So if I want the computer to do something, what I can do is I can take out my keyboard, I can type some code down, and then I can have the computer run that code for me. So for example, uh, you might think of like if you're running a website, right, and you want the users to log in, then maybe I can have like user, type in their username, type in their password. And then behind the scenes, we can have the computers first take the password and check the password against the password in the database for the user. Please do not say passwords directly into the database. And then the computer can check that if the passwords in the database and the password that the user typed in is matches, then you know you let the user log in. Otherwise, you block the users out. Tasks like these, uh, you can hard code the instructions into the computer. You can tell them exactly if uh, the user does this, or if this happens, then do this, else do that. And data structures, which is a class I've mentioned like a couple of days ago in this series, is a very good case of that, where you can hard code specific instructions into the computer if you know that the computer should do exactly this when this happens, things like that. But then there are other tasks that you might want the computer to do, which is a lot more harder to directly hard code like some instructions in. For example, suppose I have a couple of images, some images of myself and some images which is not a picture of myself. And I want the computer to classify which of those is me and which of those isn't me. How can I even do that? Well, if I were to hard code the instructions in, like, what would I tell the computer? Well, I can say maybe if, uh, you know, you have a picture and it's someone not wearing glasses, then it's not me. Uh, or if someone doesn't look that good, then it's probably also not me as well. Things like that. But then you can see it, it becomes really complicated, like, like, I have to have so many conditions and I have to have to check so many things. And if a guy does have glasses and does look good, maybe it's still not me. Uh, or like, how do I even tell the computer to check if like a person has glasses or even if it is a person at all? You can see that like, if you want to do some of these more difficult tasks, it's really, really hard to do because, well, how do you even begin to like put these instructions and tell the computers what to do? And this is where machine learning comes in because machine learning doesn't want you to hard code the instructions into the computer, but what it tries to do is to try to get the computers to learn these rules by itself. The, so the idea of machine learning is that if I have enough images of me and enough images of people or things that is not me, then we can feed those images to some algorithm, some machine learning algorithm, and then that machine learning algorithm can learn by itself to classify the different images. And then hopefully, once it goes through all the training data set that I've given it, it then is able to, for example, do tasks like image classification by itself more efficiently. So in machine learning, we don't feed the computers well, hard-coded instructions. We maybe design what we call a model for the computer. Now in machine learning, you talk a lot about different models that you can train. So, well, I mean, what are these models? Well, the models can be thought of as like maybe one of these classifiers thing that does a certain task or classify a certain thing. So you can think of a model maybe as some sort of a black box in a way. Now the black box will take in maybe some input, maybe an image that 
you have maybe for example like a person's image or something like that and then it will maybe give you some output right or maybe like a yes or a no or some answers something sort of like that maybe it also gives like a confidence level as some percentage or things like that uh, and this box basically maybe takes in an image if, if, if we're working with the example we have taken some image and then does something and then uh, determines whether that image is like for example a picture of me or not but this box has got a lot of sort of internal parameters if you want to think of it that way so in front of this box you have a lot of little knobs right so these little knobs will control different things about our box so if you turn this knob it might change something about the inside working of our model or our well, classifier or something like that. And basically, what you try to do is you try to work out which configurations of these knobs will give you the correct output for some certain inputs. And that's sort of the training stage. You want to make sure that these knobs are turned to the right positions so that if you give some certain input, it actually gives you the correct output. And that's sort of why you need a training set. Training set is like loads of images uh, that you know the answer to. And you basically use those to adjust the knobs and find which adjustments give you the best answers or give you the right answers. And how to adjust these knobs is a whole different mess altogether, more like a lot of like linear algebra and calculus and all those things but basically those is something that a computer can do pretty easily and so humans usually only have to try to design what this model might look like and then just have the computers try to find what are the best settings for the knobs now there are many ways that you can design the model that you have it can be complex or you know as easy as you like so an easier method of maybe having a model is maybe the inputs of yours is just a pair of points, maybe like some X or some Y. And X might represent a property, Y might represent another property. And, you know, like all those different values, maybe there's more dimensions, things like that. And maybe your X values, you know, some of the points that you have, you know, might cluster something like that. And then maybe you have another set of points that clusters up in another location. And you're trying to classify, you know, if you give an, an X or an, an Y, like a certain point, you want to know if it's a red point or a blue point. Maybe all your model does, is it tries to find this boundary. It is, tries to draw this boundary. And well, basically it just checks if you have a new point, does this point lie on this side or on this side of this boundary? So the knobs will be trying to find which configuration of the slope or of the plane or of the line that cuts between the two sections is the best, which in this case would be for maybe this one. And then this model, all it does is just takes a point in and then checks which side of the plane it's on, something like that. This might be one of the easier models, but nowadays we talk a lot about neural networks and stuff like that. And those are some of the more complicated models. Uh, so how it might look like is this is a box. It takes in an input. It reads in an input, maybe there's multiple inputs. For example, maybe there's multiple uh, pixels of a computer screen. Then it goes through like a very complicated branch or complicated, well, neural network, as some people might call it, where it looks sort of like neurons uh, of a human. So maybe this pixels light up, this pixels has got some colors, something like that then if it has some signal, it sends it onto the next neuron. Next neuron then might fire another set of neurons. And then those neurons then fire off something else, something like that. And then eventually it might just comes out to a, a yes or a no or something like that, right? And all these adjustments, what they do is they maybe uh, change how much like these neurons transmit different data or how sensitive it is and all those different things. This is a very basic, uh, like what neural networks sort of work. Like I know a very, very oversimplified things, but um, it's basically like just a very bare bone concept of what like neural networks and stuff is nowadays. And so not having to build a very specific model for a very specific tasks 
makes machine learning a really useful thing because like then now humans don't have to figure everything out about the logic itself but then they can also use the computer to try to figure out the logics for them and you know that that just makes some of the more complicated tasks uh, a lot easier now in the class that I took uh, in machine learning it mostly focused on deep learning so we look at models which are more like neural networks and more like the uh, second model that I sort of shown you uh, and it allows you to do many many different tasks that you, know, you might not even think computers can do things like image detection detecting what the object inside the image is or whether it's a certain person or not things like that it allows you to do things like speech recognition or even a lot of things with a human language like translating like something we say it allows you to for example generate different things like maybe generate new music or generate an image that fits the style of a certain person things like that so this class teaches you a lot about this or at least glosses over a lot of these concepts of like what sort of models people design in order to do certain tasks but then there's also other technicalities and other things that you sort of do as well. So, uh, for example, you sort of look at things like active learning, which is sort of asking the question, what is the best uh, way to select certain samples to do training on? Because uh, maybe you don't want to do training on the entire like data set that you have. Maybe you can sort of help your model train a little bit quicker if you select certain samples that the model isn't so sure about, things like that, and, and so on. There's loads of different concepts in this field. Uh, it's a very like mathematically heavy field. Like You could probably go around building models and stuff without understanding the, the mathematics behind, but if you really want to understand machine learning and deep learning, all these stuff, it, it's a lot of mathematics, a lot of things like uh, statistics, linear algebra, calculus, you sort of have to use everything. Uh, but it's very interesting and, it, and it's a technology, it's a field of computer science that is moving really quickly because of like how, like it, it's like a really uh, trendy thing nowadays as well. And there's a lot of research going on about it as well. But, but it's, it's all great fun and even if you don't know anything about computers, you know, it, it's always useful to just like maybe read on just a little bit about this stuff. But anyways, that's it for today's video on uh, my machine learning class. So thank you very much for watching this video and I hope to see you guys again soon tomorrow in the next episode where I talk about my favorite physics class.